Oh, I'm on. I got one. I got one. What up, MTBers? John B here. I'm doing a little channel takeover today. I am going to open up this month's Mystery Tackle Box Pro Box, check out some lures, then tie some lures on, and then maybe catch some fish. But within today's video, I'm gonna teach you guys how I personally would use some of the lures that came in this month's box, and then apply them out on a small little pond today. I know a lot of you guys out there who subscribe to Mystery Tackle Box don't have a boat, or maybe don't even have a kayak, so today we're just gonna go fully on foot, a total foot mission, and show you guys how I like to approach a small little body of water just like this one from the foot. Hope you guys stay tuned and enjoy. Okay. Well, we've gotta be kinda of swift here. We're chasing a storm right now. Just behind me is a nasty little, little uh, storm cloud. But sometimes these can be the best opportunities to catch fish right before a storm. Okay, first impression of the box is my first time laying eyes on this beautiful box right here. To begin with, we've got some EWG hooks. I like this, zone lock. This will be good. Um, ooh, I see something that's gonna go well with that. We got some Biospawn Exoswim, it's 4-inch swim bait. That might go good, just completely weightless. Uh, we are fishing a lake with some grass, so we might just, right, just mosey that on over some vegetation. This looks good. Uh, we've got a sticker. You don't actually fish with this, you just put it, on, put it on your tackle box, or I like to just take it off and, and just put it right on my forehead, just like that. That works as well. Um, what else do we have? We've got, ooh, I really like these. We've got some nail weights by Dobbins. And uh, these, can be, these are pretty good for finesse fish. I'm a big finesse angler, so this will come into handy, especially with those swim baits. I like this, good move. Got a spinner bait by Catchco, another good move. Dig it. Ooh, little mini whopper plopper. With it being overcast right now and this water pretty slick, I could see this maybe getting some bites. Definitely gonna tie this on immediately. Um, then we've got a sticky trailer hook. This is gonna go with the spinner bait. So if, we get a, so if we get some finicky bites today and they just so happen to miss the spinnerbait, we will still catch them, hopefully. And uh, last two lures we got, got a little soft plastic here, a little soft plastic worm, and a lipless crankbait by, who's this by? Jenko Fishing. Nice, good stuff. Okay, I think with it being overcast, I'm gonna try to gear towards the top water, which is kind of a, it's an adventurous move, especially fishing from the bank, but I think I can, uh, I can get a few nibs. And then we might also, sling that exo swim around. So I'm gonna get all rigged up and then follow me around this pond as we do some fishing. Beginning the day, we've got swim bait, exo swim guy, which I've got completely weedless and completely weightless. A lot of times when you've got storms rolling in, these fish get really antsy. They get really aggressive. They start looking up, they're popping on bait on the surface. So I'm thinking this is a good way to kind of get into the grass where a lot of baits can't get into and then maybe trigger a bite. So we've got this, and then of course, I couldn't not tie the whopper plopper on. So we've got uh, the whopper plopper on a seven foot rod. We got braid, straight braid, and this is gonna be kind of our our bait that we have to work a little harder for to get a bite. But this does calm up. I mean, they, this bait does produce a lot of big fish. So let's get after it, let's get active. Bank fishing, it's all about getting in the element. A lot of times, some of my best fishing spots are in areas like this where you kind of have to just get into it. A lot of people will see spots like this and they're like, oh, I can't cast back there, but it usually means you can find some fish. Fortunately, that spot didn't have anything on it, but we're gonna keep moving. Okay. Back to the drawing board. Think about what these fish could possibly want. We're gonna band the solo swim bait and go with the spinner bait. Uh, one kind of cool tip I wanna share with you guys that I learned as a kid is to add a nice little finishing touch to your spinnerbait. A lot of people like to just fish them alone, just like this, which works good, but if you're fishing for some fish that maybe aren't as hungry or not as aggressive, one great way to slow the presentation down, opposed to like switching slow reels, is to add this to your spinnerbait. Watch this, check this out. All right, spinnerbait's tied on, it's good to go. We're now gonna grab the swim bait that I had rigged earlier. Bite a little bit of piece of it off, not too much, but just about that much, and we're gonna thread it on there. That is gonna add some scent, some bulk, and the big important thing is it's actually gonna slow that spinnerbait down a little bit. It's gonna 
enable you to fish it a lot slower, which in result gets possibly some more bites. Allows that fish to catch up to it. And of course, it's not a finished spinnerbait unless we throw a trailer hook on there. And this is what a trailer hook is, in case you guys don't know. It's just this little hook right here. It's got a nice little rubber band on it on the back where the line tie is. You just hook it like this, literally just punch it right through. It's kind of a crazy concept and slide it through. So it's pointing in the same direction as your main hook. And this is actually really important for getting those half strikes. You know, you've seen fish jump on a bait. It looks like they've eaten it, but they barely even touched it and you even feel anything. That's where that stinger comes into play, that stinger hook, that little trailer. This little thing right here can be the difference between a missed fish and a caught personal bust. Just that little tiny hook. Thankfully they put it in this month's box. I'm not, I now have more confidence. Let's keep fishing. I see some good bank up there. Oh, I'm on. I got one. I got one. Spinnerbait bass. Get in the boat. Yeah. Oh, that is what I'm talking about. I knew they lived here. Oh, look at that. Both hooks. Got them on the right cheek and got them on the left cheek. All it took was a little bit of nasty weather to turn these fish on. That's not a bad little fish. Might I add, good stuff from the bank. Yes, you can catch fish in nasty water, especially from the bank. The, the way I caught that fish was very simple and straightforward. Hold on, I'm gonna put him back so he doesn't dry up. Here you go. See you, bud. The way I caught that fish, I put myself right here in this open little spot, nice little area to cast. I'm not gonna get hung up. And I was running that spinnerbait right along this rocky, grassy area, really slow and steady. You guys have probably seen the GoPro clip. I'm just going like this, nothing fancy. And that fish ate about 10 feet from the bank, so nice and good. I think on that note, we should probably get out of here. This storm is not going to get any better. I hope you guys learned some tips and tricks today on how to fish from the bank. Bank fishing is fun, it's rewarding, and you can actually catch some pretty big fish doing it. Be sure to subscribe to Mystery Tackle Box's channel, and don't forget, you can use this code right here to save $10 off on your first box if you're a, a new subscriber or an MTB -er. So anyway, I'm peacing out. I don't wanna get too stuck out here. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys next time. Peace.